Hello my schoolers, I'm Abiola. This is my school channel where we'll be tackling the Jam CBT past questions, work past questions, NECO and NAPTEL questions. Today, I'll be solving the 2019 Jam past question for chemistry. I'll be providing with step-by-step -step solution to each of the questions of this year. So, I have also provided a link in the description below where you can access the other videos that provide solution to the rest of the questions. So in this clip, I'll be solving questions 1 to 10. So this is the first of a series of clips. So now let's go over to question 1. A secondary alkanol can be oxidized to give and dash. Okay, so at first we know that alkanols can be primary, tertiary or secondary. So at first, you will recall that one of the chemical properties of alkanols is oxidation. So when you oxidize a primary or alkanol, what you will have is an alkana or a carboxylic acid, depending on the reaction. Also, for secondary alkanols, once they are oxidized, what you will get is an alkanone, which is option A. Then for tertiary alkan alkanols, they cannot be oxidized. So our answer is definitely A. A secondary alkanol will be oxidized to give an alkanol. Now to question two. Which of the following will give a precipitate with an aqueous solution of copper one chloride? So when you look through our options, you see that option D, but one hine, is actually a terminal alkyne which has its triple bond attached to the last carbon atom, the farthest carbon atom, and you realize that the hydrogen bond attached to that last carbon atom is susceptible. So that is where most reactions will take place, especially a substitution reaction. So definitely, a precipitate will be formed with but one ion in an aqueous solution of copper one chloride. So we have question number three. The IUPAC name for CH3, CH2, COO CH2 CH3 is okay. So join me as we re replicate this on our board. So we have the IUPAC name, that is the standard name. Okay, so that is we have CH3 CH2 COO CH2 CH3. So this is definitely an ester formed from the process of esterification. An esterification is a reaction between an alkanol and an alkanoic acid to form an ester, okay? So, when we put this together, we'll have C2, C and C, that is C2. I'm just trying to make this simpler as possible, okay? H3, H2, that is H5. We have COO, okay? 1, 2, that is C2, okay? We have H2, H3, that is 5. Okay, so what you just have to do, remember in the homologous series, you can just do something like this, M, E, P, B, P, okay, so this is Met, this is Et, this is Pro, this is Boot, this is Paint, okay, so definitely, that means one carbon atom, this is for two carbon atom, three carbon atom, four, five, and such is the series, okay? So if you look at it, we have a two. So definitely this is going to be, and this is an alkyl group. So this is going to be ethyl, we're starting from here, okay? Ethyl, then if we move down here, you realize that it has, I told you, it's a reaction between an alkanol and an alkanoic acid. So this is definitely, when you look at it, this is C2, if you count one, two, that is ethyl, it's supposed to be ethyl, but at this point, remember that it's is a reaction between an alkanol and alkanoic acid. So this alkanoic acid actually reacted with this. So there was definitely an hydrogen, so which makes it P, the third carbon atom, okay? So we should now have ethyl propanoate and ester, okay? Propanoate. So this is our answer. So let's go through our options together. Okay, ethyl propanoate, that makes option C correct. So we have question number four. A certain hydrocarbon on complete combustion at STP, that's a standard temperature and pressure, produced 89.6 dm cube of CO2, carbon dioxide, and 54 gram of water. The hydrocarbon should be, okay, so 
while we are trying to prefer solution to question number four, don't forget to take our simulated CBT exams for your mobile app and the CBT mobile exams for your software which you can install on your computers. So we have it on the Play Store as My School CBT exams for your apps. Then we also have the My School CBT software where I've provided the link in the description below where you can access and get yours right now. Okay, so let's go back to question number four. So we have this formula for the general combustion of the hydrocarbon in this question we are tackling. So we see that the combustion produces 89.6 dm cube of CO2. Now you recall that at STP, we have STP mentioned in the question as standard temperature and pressure, the a volume of gas, once if it's CO2, once volume of CO2 should give you 22.4 dm cube. Okay? So in this question, we are told from the combustion, the volume of CO2, which is unknown to us, okay, gives us 89.6 dm cube. So we know normally that one mole of CO2 should give us 22.4 dm cube. So how many moles of CO2 will give us 89.6? So very easy. So we just cross multiply. So we have 89.6 times 1 over, which is equals to x times 22.4 okay i can take it direct but i want you to follow as we solve with these easy steps okay so this goes here then we have four that means four moles okay so that means four moles of carbon four oxides produces 89.6 dm cube okay so that means our x is four moles now let's go for how many moles of water is produced through this combustion reaction okay very well so recall that normally the molar mass of water h2o molar mass of water water h2o that will be remember one times two okay plus we have oxygen which is 16 times 1, just one of it. So that gives us 1 times 2, that is 2. 16 times 1, that is 16. So 2 plus 16, that is 18 gram. Okay? So normally we should have 18 gram of water in a mole. So we have one of it equals 18. Therefore, from the question we are given, we are given that. 54 grams were produced so we would have okay so when we cross multiply we would have 54 times 1 equals 18 times x okay dividing through 18 18 sorry okay i don't have to call this x so that we won't mix things up so i can call it b okay let's just so that we will not mix it up with the value we've gotten for x already here yeah. so we have b Dividing through 18 yen 1, 18 yen 3. So that means B equals 3. So recall that we have the number of moles as Y over 2. So that means B, the number of moles, equals the amount that we have for the oxygen. Okay. So we are, we are having the value of B as 3. So that implies 3 equals Y over 2. Is that okay? So when we cross multiply, we have 2 times 3 equals y. So that is y equals 6. So that means 6 moles of water was produced and 4 moles of carbon dioxide was produced. So what hydrocarbon actually has this formula? So let's just slot it in here. So recall from here, from the reactant side, which is Cx and H Hy, where x is 4, okay? And where y is 6. So, if you go through your homologous series, which hydrocarbon actually has, which family has C4H6? So, definitely, it will be this Cn, H2N, okay, minus 2. So, let's try it out. So, that's C4. I'm trying to just uh, refresh our memory. That's C4. 
h2 times 4 minus 2 okay so that's definitely c4 h8 minus 2 that gives you c4 h6 all right so if you go through our options you will see it option d so don't forget to hit the like button and tap on the subscribe button and also ring on the bell notification to get informed as we release the next video question number five two methyl prop one in is an isomer of so at first let's draw out the structure of this hydrocarbon so we have two methyl prop one in two methyl prop one in okay all right so that's what we have from our question so if you want to draw it out so remember prop that is one two three from the first from the recent homologous series i drew out okay m e p so that's three three carbon atoms one two then three okay or if you want to write it out whichever one works for you so we have two methyl two methyl so if we count from here we have one two Still come from here, we have one, two. So this is definitely where the methyl group, the alkyl group falls to. So I can represent this by R, okay, depending on what you want. Or so if you want to write it out as CH3. Okay, so this depends on what you want. Okay, so we have two methyl prop one in. That is, it is on the first carbon atom, that is where the double bond lies. Okay, so I can write this to make it simpler for us as something like this. So definitely, I've done this. Okay, so we're going to have this. I don't want to confuse you. So definitely, we have another acyl group here. So I can make this easier by writing CH3, C123. Okay, just follow me. Okay, we have here the two methyl, isn't it? So we still have it. C then CH3, this is the carbon atom, and this is the acyl group attached to it, <clears throat> pardon. So, we have this that carries the double bond. So, looking straight at the double bond, we are going to take the carbon atom that is the longest as our root hydrocarbon. That is where we'll be starting from. So, if we want to restructure that, it's going to still be very easy. So, recall this, just look at these two things, and that's what we are working with. So, what we are going to be having will be first your acyl group okay which forms the longest hydrocarbon okay for us so then we have this double bond okay then another acyl group okay so this is the isomer for methylpropane so if you want to name this you count your carbon atoms one two three four okay so that is definitely butane so where does the butene falls? It falls on number two, one, two. Okay, so that's with boot two in. So if you go through our options together, that is option C. So here we have question number six. Hydrocarbons which will react with Stalin's reagents conform to the general formula so they we have been asked what hydrocarbon reacts with Stalin's reagent so definitely this is called the mirror test or the silver mirror test as you may wish so anytime we use Stalin's reagent to check out hydrocarbons the hydrocarbons in question or in view they are called aldehydes and they have the general uh, formula CnH2n plus 1OH the hydroxyl group okay so definitely our answer is D so we have question 7 the IUPAC name of the compound CF3 CHBRCL is so let's replicate the question on the board okay so we have CF3 CHBRCL L. okay so uh, this can help us when we draw out the structure of the hydrocarbon remember two carbons okay so let me bring it down so that we can draw out the structure properly pardon me okay all right 
So we see that fluorine has replaced all of the hydrogen atoms. Okay, so we we'll have just one hydrogen atom here. So we have bromine and uh, chlorine. Okay, so if we want to name this properly, remember that anytime you are naming, you name according to alphabetical order. So this is B, C, F. Okay, so that means our name you should start with the B. So, and the B falls on, the bromine falls on the second carbon atom. So, that will be 2-bromo. Okay? Alright? Then, we have 2-chloro. Then, we now have fluorine on the first carbon atom. So, that is 1-1. One, one. We have three fluorines. So, 1-1-1-tri. One, 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 that is three fluorines, like I said, trifluoro. So if you look at this carbon atom, they are just so that makes it ethane. Two fluoro ethane. So if you go through our options, you will see that um, option B matches our answer. All right. So in case you have questions or you need clarity on any of the questions we have solved so far. We have several solution providers on the MySchool website in the classroom and study room. Just ask it as a comment. I have provided the link in the description below where you can ask your questions right now. And within minutes, solutions will be preferred to you. Okay, so let's go back to the question we have before us. A synthetic rubber is not obtained from the polymerization of... So which of these is not a monomer? Of synthetic rubber okay so recall that polymerization is the addition or bring it together with several monomers several smaller molecules to form a bigger one okay so looking at option a neoprene is a trade name for synthetic rubber in short it's referred to as the polychloroprene okay so we have option b isoprene isoprene is definitely a monomer of synthetic rubber Butadiene is definitely a monomer of synthetic rubber. Then coming to option D, hexane. Hexane is a hydrocarbon solvent where the polymerization actually takes place. So the option that is correct to this question before us is option D, hexane. Okay, so I believe you may have one or two ways or explanations that makes it easier for us to understand any question we've solved so far. Please indicate the question number and the explanation you would like to suggest to us in the comment section below. Over to question 9. Burning magnesium ribbon in air removes which of the following? I, oxygen, I, I, nitrogen, I, 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 argon, I, V, carbon, 4 oxide. Okay, so recall this. Anytime we burn magnesium in air the magnesium atom at high temperature reacts with oxygen to produce a bright white light with intense heat in the environment that's an exothermic reaction and at the end of the day the product we'll be having will be a white powdery ash and that ash is referred to as magnesium oxide okay so definitely burning magnesium in air reacts with Oxygen. So magnesium atom and oxygen come together. So what is removed from the air is oxygen and that is I only and that's option C. So we are here at question number 10. Which of the following is the best starting material for the preparation of oxygen? So we are asked eating of triosonitrate 5 with which of these metals? So definitely, if you recall, when we eat triazonitrate 5 or react triazonitrate 5 with lead, what you will have is lead nitrate, okay? And that is a redox reaction to give you lead oxide, nitrogen dioxide, and oxygen. So it's definitely a good starting point for the preparation of oxygen. So our answer is option A. So that is all for this segment, but there is more. So don't forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and tap on bell notification to get informed as we release the next videos.